That there is the lovely Paul. He's been up here drinking with me for two days. Yes. So. Yeah, I've been feeling it. <laughs> feeling it a little bit this morning. And he's very keen to come out, so he's come out at sunrise to see me off. Yeah, make sure you actually leave. Yeah, <laughs> and don't take all your stuff with me. <laughs> Ah, oh, textbook. Textbook. Bye. Bye. I think you're going the wrong way, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I love the sound of magpies. So day 14, uh, just had a nice rest day in Albury, which was uh, quite good. The problem with having a rest day is that when you start paddling again, it's that second day after exercise and all the muscles are taking a while to warm up. But I uh, had a lovely time in Albury. My friend Paul drove up from Melbourne the four hours to come and hang out with me for the day or for the night. So uh, we had a nice meal last night, a few beers. He uh, drove me off to Bunnings yesterday so I can go and get a few odds and ends. But uh, yeah, it's looking like it's going to be a great day. It's going to be 20 degrees today. And I was getting a bit worried actually because uh, after my paddle into Albury and it was so low, um, I heard from one of my paddling friends down the river that the irrigation season had finished. So they've started restricting the flow out of the Hume Weir and that's why it was so shallow. But even though it's shallow, it is actually starting to flow a bit, so I'm doing sort of 9-10 k's an hour, which is encouraging because I thought I wasn't going to make any of my planned uh, stops because I wasn't going to be able to do the distance. But if it's doing that sort of speed, I should be right. Alright, let's go and warm the body up and uh, see what the river has to hold for us down the stream. So I've done about 46 and a half kilometers today and it's about oh, 2.30. As you can see, the river has got very wide. It's been like this for a while now and it's uh, subsequently very shallow. So I've had three times where I've actually grinded my bottom of my boat down some rocky little pebble runs, which has not very pleasant feeling, especially when you're in a Kevlar boat. It just doesn't feel good. Um, but yeah, going all right actually. I thought today was going to be a lot worse. I've just been listening to podcasts and reading my book, or listening to my book, and it's just been a nice sunny day. So nothing much to report. Lots of cows, lots of trees, a few ducks, lots of birds. <laughs> Well, here I am. I've found myself a little campsite in Doolan's Bend Reserve, but it's a uh, Saturday night, so it's uh, pretty busy here. We've got people there, people there, lots of people down there. So, luckily, I don't need a little a river view, so I've got my spot here that's well away from all those folk. But uh, yeah, it's been a quite interesting day actually. It was. Uh, just a day of paddling. There wasn't anything really interesting, that's why I haven't done many videos. Um, just listened to my book, listened to the podcast, and just enjoyed the river, enjoyed the sun uh, the sunshine. And tomorrow I'm heading down to Korowa 
um, probably staying at the caravan park there so I think that's about 56 kilometers so a little bit longer than today but being that I it's a caravan park I don't need to worry too much about hunting for a campsite so I can paddle a bit later into the day all right well time for my tacos and gonna probably go to bed pretty early tonight bit Blair Witch Projecty, sorry. Uh, good morning, just having my uh, breakfast in bed, as I do every day. Um, yeah, another day of paddling coming up, day 15, but uh, heading down to Coral today, it's about 50, well, my calculations say it's about 56 kilometres. What I am finding, though, is because of the low water, you can't cut corners, because you have to stick to the outside bend of the river, which is making it actually a lot longer than if you just calculate the length of the river because you really are doing that a little bit of extra distance so yesterday was meant to be a 52 kilometer day and I ended up doing 56 so that extra four kilometers was literally just from hugging the outside bend of the river so yeah so it could be a really long day today uh, anyway I'm going to try and get on the water right before sunrise so I better finish my breakfast and uh start packing everything up. I've got to say, today I am definitely taking a while to get my motivation. <laughs> Actually, I was quite motivated to get on the water. I was on the water by 10 past 7, but for the last half an hour I've just been drifting. Um, so I thought I could answer some of the questions that people have been asking me. So yesterday I put a call out on Facebook for people to ask me any questions they had, and uh, it was interesting to see what people have messaged me. A lot of fascination about my beard, which is strange, because well, I guess I've never been a beardy person. In fact, this is the longest I've ever grown a beard so far. So this is 15 days. And I am pretty much committed to not shaving the whole trip. So we'll see how it looks after a couple of months. I may have to get the old neck beard a bit cleaned up at some point in some town. But for now, let's go see if we can go Grizzly Adams. The other question, which was obviously someone's been very observant, uh, was about my gloves because I do paddle with gloves, but they were fascinated with the fact that I use two different types of gloves. So I've got the neoprene one here and my fingerless one there. And that's for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's cold, so neoprene one's good to keep the fingertips warm, but they're really slippery. And so what I do is I use this one, which has got a lot more grip on my hand that pivots the paddle. And then this one's just spinning in the other one. So. Ideally, I mean, if it's really cold, I'll use two neoprene, but this is quite a nice way of uh, keeping the hands warm. But also, I get a, it's quite a sore wrist on this wrist, so this actually provides a bit of support for it as well. So that's the reason. All right, time to get motivated. Let's do this. Excuse me? Do you mind? Come on! Ah. Always the centre of attention. Um, yeah, today is hard. I'm not going to lie. I, uh, hang on, just three. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bit of Murphy's Law there. Every time there's a tree, you're going to hit it. Um, yeah, so not a great day today. Well, it's good. It's nice, but my back is sore. I think my body's telling me I've uh, done a lot of paddling in the last couple of weeks. So, uh, yeah, going pretty slowly. I've got I've done 20 k's. I've got nearly 60 to do today down to Korowa. So, uh, yeah, just trying to 
keep my motivation, keep going, listening to some books and listening to some music and uh, just sort of slogging on. I'm trying to get out every two hours just to give my back a stretch. It's one of those, you know, you, you spend time getting out of the boat so you've got to play the balance between wasting time getting out of the boat but also the benefit of getting out of the boat. So it makes it a trickier, trickier little scenario. But yeah, anyway, I must keep paddling. Must keep paddling. So I've been wanting to uh, show you some good examples of these retaining posts that are all along the, uh, the river in the last couple of days. So basically what it looks like they're doing is they've put these posts and little walls on all the outer bends of the river so that where the water is moving faster and pushing against the wall it's not eroding them as quickly. But yeah, normally you probably wouldn't see much of them because the uh, river is higher but right now you can see them all. So it's kind of weird, you come around every bend and there are all these sort of ghostly little walls sort of holding it all up. Looks like some sort of fort out of Game of Thrones. Well, I made it to Korowa. It was a long day. I think I've done, what's that say? For eight hours and 55 minutes and 59 kilometers. So, pretty big paddle day considering the, uh, the flow was definitely started to slow down. So that was nearly nine hours of just paddling. But that's alright, I had a good audio book that I listened to. In fact, I listened to a whole audio book, so I was able to go into that trance that you go into when you listen to an audio book. And uh, I don't actually remember much of the river, to be honest. It was uh, just a day in my own head, which was good. Right, I have to go down to the caravan park, which is somewhere down here. I don't know, one of these ramps down here. And then I'm going to go into town and get some food, because I cannot be bothered cooking tonight. All right, tomorrow, another big day, and the following day I should be down in Yarrawonga. But uh, I might do a bit of shuffling on my kilometres for tomorrow and the next day, and just sort of even it out a bit, because it was meant to be 52 k's, and then it was going to be 20 k's. That was because I thought it would be very flat on Lake Yarr at the Lake Yarrawonga. But considering it's so flat anyway, I might as well just divvy up those kilometres and try and do a couple of 30, 40 kilometres and 30 kilometres or something like that. So I'll go and have a look at where the campsites are and have a play with the numbers. All right, I will probably not do much more recording tonight, so I'll see you tomorrow. Well, good morning. Welcome to a, another beautiful day in paradise. Stunning weather again. Do you know what's crazy though? It's minus one degree and I'm sitting here in a t-shirt. So I uh, think I'm becoming acclimatized to this cold weather, which is quite nice. I'm sure that will change when it rains or it's windy. So uh, I'm just sitting here on the end of the boat ramp at the Korowa uh, Caravan Park. And as you can see, it doesn't quite make it to the water. So this was a bit of a surprise last night when I showed up because the water is so low that uh, even the boat ramps are a metre above the water line so I had to end up scrambling and carrying the gear all up this bank which was fine but uh, <laughs> the nice surprise was when I got to the top of the boat ramp uh, Ed, one of the owners of this place, Ed and Karen who are lovely people uh, was sitting there with his car and an empty trailer ready to help drive my gear up to where I was going to be sleeping last night but uh, I had to break news to him that I've got my unwritten rule that I'm not going to actually put my kayak on a car or a vehicle until I get to South Australia. So I had to walk up <laughs> to where I was staying rather than actually do the, uh, do the car portage. So I've uh, been having a bit of think about this all and uh, yesterday and the day before I think I felt a little bit whingy. I was very tired and 
I think the uh, lack of water started getting to me a bit, but I have come in today with a whole new attitude and decided that, you know what, I'm going to suck it up and just enjoy it. I can't really complain when I'm going to have 20 degrees and no wind for another day. Um, I'll save all the complaining for later when it gets really crappy. But uh, yeah, I've managed to sort of have a look at the map and work out that I don't need to necessarily do 52 k's today. I'll be able to maybe shorten that to about 40, 45. Uh, there's a few national parks along the river, so I've got a few camping options. And that will make life a lot happier. Anyway, I'm kind of sitting here procrastinating on the side of the river today rather than getting in the boat and then procrastinating. But it is warming up and the sunrise and the sun is coming up, so I may as well get into it. Well, here I am sitting on the mighty Murray River. Well, actually, I am beached in the middle of the not so mighty river. To give you an idea of how deep it is at the moment, have a look at that. That is how deep it is here. And just up here, where I've got to sort of get through, I may have to walk through it. There's about a meter between that tree and that bank there, so. If it's too shallow, I may just have to walk around that one. Never thought this would actually happen. I knew it was low. Amazing. goes against all my instincts going under logs. So check this out. So a little while ago, like three hours ago the Murray split in half <laughs> and it went kind of in two different directions and I chose the direction that was the main what looked like the main river on the map and it appears that that one was the main river so that's why it's been so shallow because I've been going down what is the Murray River but it was a sort of shallower branch of it so now that's all back together Looks a little bit deeper and a little bit wider. So we are here now, and down here, it's a bit hard to see, it's a bit glary at the moment. Uh, down here, where I've come all the way along this bit, which was all that shallow stuff, there's actually, a, it was a split where the rivers come all the way along here, and then joined up down here. So when I was there, it was about 50-50 in terms of the amount of water that was going each way. So I did the natural thing and followed the river, not a very faint blue line on the map. And uh, apparently that was the wrong choice. And here's even another branch of the river that is now joining up with us. So yeah, <laughs> it's kind of crazy that five minutes ago I was stuck on the bottom of the river and now I'm back into this. Anyway, I have got about, I don't know, my numbers are all wrong now. Um, probably about 
four or five k's till I get to a nice place to camp, so I might actually have an early afternoon. It means I've got a longer paddle tomorrow, but you know what? After all of that today, I kind of feel like just having a nice cruisy afternoon. Well, I have found myself a campsite in the National Park, so it's got a nice little beach here which is not too muddy because every other beach I've stood on I've sunk up to my ankles, as you can see by the amount of mud in here. Uh, but despite having a quite a large bank here, it's got a little staircase, so that's quite nice. If you come up here, nice open spot with a nice view of the river. Do you want to see something really cute? Look what I did. I tied my boat to the bank just in case they let some water out of the dam tonight and my boat floats away. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen but can never know with this river. Well, I think I actually really enjoyed today. Uh, I think I finally found my mojo. Even though I spent a lot of time just dragging along the bottom of the river and being stuck in the middle of the river, I still really enjoyed it. So yeah, it's kind of good. I think it's also nice only having done 35 kilometers and getting to a campsite in the early afternoon, which means you've got time to chill out and eat without rushing before the sun's setting. So that's also a big bonus. So I'm here in the Murray Valley Regional Park, so as you can see it's part of the National Parks and I'm actually on the New South Wales side tonight so that's a bit of a change for my camping. And yeah, basically tomorrow I've got to head across to Yarrawonga so most of that's going to be crossing a lake. Uh, hopefully I won't have a too much of a headwind doing that. I think they were forecasting a bit of rain and it clouded over before but it's all cleared up again now so who knows what the weather will hold. I've got no internet here so I can't tell. Alright, well I'm going to go and chill out and have a nice afternoon here by the river. What a cracker of a sunrise. So good morning, uh, no idea what day it is today, but uh, I, all I know is it's heading down to Yarrawonga Day. So about 30, 32 kilometers I think to go, but it's a bit hard to tell when the, you don't know what the lake looks like and what the river's doing. Um, but I managed to get a little bit of internet last night and saw the weather forecast was for wind and a bit of rain maybe just before lunch. So I thought I'd get on the water early and try and get down there before it all got a bit too nasty because crossing lakes with headwinds and rain is not so exciting. Plus I've got a bit of a portage to do today so uh, yeah may as well get into it as soon as possible. All right time to head off. Look at that sunrise. Just while I remember I uh, had to make a correction in a previous video that I did. Uh, I was talking about the Victoria New South Wales border and said that uh, the first 200 meters of Victoria from the bank was Crown Land. It's actually 60 meters. Uh, it was measured off the old measuring system of chains. So it was three chains from the riverbank. Not that you would go 200 meters deeper from the river, but I thought I'd better correct that. So it's only 60 meters. So the river's looking very lakey all of a sudden, so I think we're coming up to Lake Mullawa soon. And uh, yeah, so much for this headwind and rain. I've actually had a tailwind. It's a bit of a east-northeasterly at the moment rather than the north-westerlies they're talking about. And there's definitely no sign of rain up there. So a very unexpected day again, but very pleasant so far. So it's a bit of a maze of creeks and uh, different little lagoons and stuff around here so I'm just trying to find whether there are shortcuts. So the river currently is meant to be going down this way 
and there's a bit of a shortcut going through there so I'm just having a look to see whether that looks doable looks like it I've had so many bad experiences of getting lost so far that I just want to check out that it looks all good see across there but there's a uh, that's the front coming through But uh, it's not a headwind, it's more of a crosswind sort of coming in from the north here, uh, which is okay. It's just it's sort of pushing me sideways a lot, so I have to keep making sure I don't hit logs like that one there. Uh, but yeah, I'm just sort of navigating my way through sort of log city here. Next to I think that was some of the hardest paddling I've ever done because uh, the crosswind ends up, I think it's about 40 k's an hour as you can see up in these trees here and uh, I was getting like one metre standing waves crashing over my deck and I was still trying to dodge logs and things so basically I've had to pull up on the first beach I could find and uh, as you can see it's kind of getting a bit rough here and I'm about 4k short of my target, so I'm actually going to have to walk into walk those 4k's, I think, because it's pretty bloody unsafe out there. Plus, uh, it's going to rain soon too. So, uh, a lot more exciting than I had planned. But uh, yeah, my plan is to take tomorrow off now, because uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to move my left arm after all the fighting against that wind. All right, I'm going to start my big hike. <clears throat> well, here I am walking. Come that way. Going that way. The storm is coming this way. But uh, so it's about seven kilometres that I've got to walk. It's definitely safer than uh, paddling on that water. So uh, yeah, this is going to be a long afternoon.
well this is getting a little ridiculous I seem to be doing a lot of pushing of things in this trip anyway I've done five kilometers we've got two more to go luckily there's a uh, petrol station with a pie shop so I've got pie and a donut and a coke so that will get me to the end Well, holy dooly, what a big day. So I've made it to this cottage that I'm going to be having for the next two days, which is quite nice. And it just happens to be right next to the boat ramp just here. Uh, so in two days time, I won't have to walk very far because God knows I'm sick of walking. Um, yeah, I don't even know how to sum up today. <laughs> it started nice, then the the waves got big and then I did a lot of walking so another video of me walking which was not the plan of this whole trip anyway uh, I guess this is sort of it for this video I'm gonna go and have a beer and have some food and have a shower and then I'll probably start editing and try and get this out tomorrow so till next week catch you later